It is a warm day down here. 77 degrees, maybe 80. I don't know. But it is warm. Kind of like, well, back in whatever. <laughs> Shorts? Yeah, oh, it's not there. Oh, nice. How much should I talk about today? I don't know. Oh, this thing is all haywire here, huh? Okay, we'll put it over here. Yeah, that's a cool stock down. Yeah, you know, Dr. Hutchison, and I started to look here and go bang on the floor. No, thank you all. Okay, look, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's warm. I don't know if that's a good thing or what, but then you got British Columbia, Canada, where it's got huge amounts of rain going on up there, so we're possibly thinking of a global warming... And also they had the heat dome up there, 121 in Merritt Town in British Columbia, 105 in Vancouver. Kind of unheard of temperatures. Unheard of. Wow, wow. I just had a shower. A Sunday shower and that kind of thing. Uh, I was busy with some other things. I mounted a bounce off on some wheels and then I'm going to have the so called turning center onto some wheels. At, uh, in, at um, Spindle, it's all bearings. What a heck of a milling machine that thing would make. How would you do that? Hmm. Well. Get somewhere where there's heavy plate steel. Get it cut to a certain C shape. Mount the head on a couple of plates that you can adjust the head this way and that way. I mean, I could probably salvage old stuff and get a um, piece of a, a milling machine somewhere and clamp it onto the C shaped piece for your table up and down and all your different movements. Oh, uh, it's just a thought. Just a thought. Just a thought. No. Hmm. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm back in this. That's how warm it is. A little. Little squirt. I think I get a kilt. I think I should get a kilt. Since I'm Scottish and Native American. What would you think? A kilt would be cool. Hot. It would be very hot, Barbara. Ooh, moving around here. Yeah, I got bandages. Licks and I think it's an insect bite. It was very itchy for a couple of days. Slightly swollen. I put uh, hydrogen peroxide on it, full strength, 36%, no, 35%. Then iodine and put a bandage on it. So it's not itching now, but anyway. Let's see, what else can I say here? Uh, <laughs> comfortable here. Mm. All right. Spendo chop stock. Spendo chop stock. <laughs> Crazy, huh? <sighs> oh, well. Hmm. There's a lot of tropic wine. You probably see the other video I did in this area. A lot of traffic and motorcycle as well as antique cars going down the road. I covered some of it, but missed out. Hmm. thinking of my iPad holder for this thing because it's going to fall over I think it's moving a little bit okay. got nothing to do now since I took a shower and did my work
see if that signal works better. I don't know. Oh, slide away on me now. There we go. Let's see. So it sticks in this thing. Yeah, put it up here. Crash bank. Don't move this out of the way. Okay, okay we're going to have to unit, I think. I'm kind of in focus. I think so. Yes, 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 yes. Focus face. <sighs> so, there's a, fun, a Facebook page. I, uh, I didn't create it. Somebody else in Portugal called the Hutchison Effect Investigations Facebook page. It is now about over, just a little bit over 1,000 members on it. I'm, I'm supposedly the admin, admin. I did not know that. <laughs> so approve all. Okay. Anyway, one of my friends, internet friends, I can't how to call it. I don't, never met him in person. Penny Jade England. He's a unique, or she is a unique native. American and wrote up an article on what she's doing with oh if you might watch this video Penny congratulations on your operation you've been waiting for that for a long time hope you're feeling better I know you will be nothing worse than that kind of stress and I understand that fully um, so Penny wrote up that she's got some Navy do line equipment and got some minor results sort of with it she, she mentioned also that uh, probably people won't get lucky with lots of shelf components for this kind of thing if it's what I think it is, it's got a multiple channels for back and forth communication and radar searching indicators, as well as um, for, um, identific identification and friend or foe. How you heard of that? A long time ago, no. Warships. Identification, friend or foe. It was phase discriminators, phase angling with these kind of machines. I mean, the whole phase inverters were about 19 and a half inches by 12 tall and weighed a ton. They're very rare. I've never seen any others. I got mine from RP Electronics on 4th Avenue in Vancouver. Meaning you could take the, the, the radio waves and do anything you want with them, kind of. And then you got magnetic amplifiers, which had several of those units. 19 and a half inches by, I think about 15 tall, or 16. Rack mountable units. And make a humming sound when they're working. So, Penny, uh, be safe with that thing because when I used to wear glasses, my glasses got hot. It's kind of a weird heat feeling. So, uh -oh. But then I understood that if I ganged certain pieces, other pieces together, a lot of it is solid state, by the way, and half of it's vacuum tube too, as well. But it was kind of intriguing to see the effects that I created. That uh, toy warship I have, it's what long ship. We're going to do the Philadelphia experiment. Fun stuff with Ron Meloni, a BAE system. Got weird things happening with the water. It was filmed, it's for History Channel. As well as the ship itself was sending sparks off where sparks are going to it, coming out of the water or whatever it was. I got to think that uploaded on the internet that particular video
But they broadcast it on CBS Radio KSLX Los Angeles. Your money's worth. Was it Ryan Tomlinson and that some lady by the name of Des Des Descock or Descock something? Diana Descock. A half hour with Robert Drake, one of the film producers. And we had 13 episodes ready to go. We had a good idea what to do once they throw money at something like that. But plus, there's the surplus Navy yards in around that area down in LA and San Francisco. Thirteen episodes. Now, Philadelphia Experiment, also Free Energy Experiments anti-grab stuff and other things investigating the Antarctic effects of time distortion Russian scientists found out about that years and years ago I got the emails I printed them all out uh, that was mm, interesting so Penny if you got an antenna, make sure you're shielded very well when doing your testing. And post the information if you want to, or if you don't want to be bothered by people. I guess because well, a penny has duplicated some parts of the. That's just another fact. Congratulations, that's really cool. Inspired me to make a blabbering, stupid video today. Ha, ha, ha. Um, Penny's way up in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. I wonder how the weather's doing up there. Hmm. This town area here missed the heat dome this year, as well as the major rainstorms. It's just in the right position. It's where the redwoods and ravens love to live. It's kind of fascinating. I don't, I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm not a scientist. Speculation, I suppose, I'm doing. But it's interesting, this whole earth changes stuff. It's always been like this anyway. I mean, things change and transgress and regress and go forward and backwards. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, so, thanks Penny, that was a good inspiration to make a stupid video today. Starting with your experiments and the topic you wrote up in the Hutchison Lab Investigations. If you're interested in joining it, join it. I'll let you guys do your thing and communicate amongst themselves and maybe find some cool info. I haven't got that much time for fun book. Um, I go on and check and go back off and go back on. And then I go to YouTube, search videos, how to do this, what's this, what's the strength of needed for a caster. Mm, milling machine, blades, vintage radio, how to make a vacuum. Too. Oh, there's hundreds of things on YouTube. That occupies my time at night when I've got nothing else to do. I can't come here because it's a mile away. That'll change in a couple of months. And then I'll be here in the evening time working away on things. Uh, so, yeah. And then I answer emails or delete most of them. And what else do I do? Of course, I upload my stupid videos. And uh, comments, I'll reply to comments. So far, the comments have been pretty nice. Once in a long time, I get a stalker, you know. And blah, blah, blah. Well, I just simply go to psychology today and look up internet troll or a stalker. He likes to leave nasty comments in, so I'll hold in whole pile of information on their psychological profile people that like doing that to other people 
Let us take the link in this post as a reply to them. If I want to be bothered. But, uh... Yeah, it's kind of interesting, this warm weather stuff. So, on the last night, I did a stupid video called Edgemont Village. <coughs> I talked about some of the weird history up there. Eh. Halloween up in Edgemont Village was a for us, it was fun. We egged the cops and the fire people, people in cars, and got nasty. And it was called the Halloween riots, actually. And my friend and I get up on top of the bank and throw eggs at people. But that's all we did. We didn't. Well, we let off big explosions here and there, and blew a telephone pole in half one time. Took a man, whole cover off threw a bunch of gas down there and lit it on fire. We're totally nuts, you know? You don't do that kind of thing. I made the mistake one time of spitting in a Polish commando's face. Oh, I wound up in the ditch fast, you know? Little Johnny laying in the ditch and all kind of... He just walks away, you know, spit into people's faces. God, as an asshole. <laughs> Mr. Hethington, we had a big fight up at the school. Shook hands. It was a good fight. It's bleeding and all that silly stuff. And Mr. Hethington, right across the street. I was such a nasty little bastard. Bastard! In the good old days, before everything is not right to do anymore, there's no freedom left. You could buy it from your local pharmacy, Isaac's Pharmacy up in Edgemont Boulevard. I could buy a gallon of nitric acid or a gallon of sulfuric acid in a glass bottle, pay for them, walk home with these things, do my weird stuff with them. And I was naughty and I took the two half gallon jugs and poured it all over Mr. Hedrington's ga uh, grass in the night and a smoking steam like something out of the exiles. See, I totally nuts. Never mess with an engineer. That's an old saying. I know everything how to mess with you later. <laughs> uh is it Rittenbacher? Lyle Ritten, the kid that just defended himself? Interviewed by Carlson Tucker of Fox TV. And Carlson brought up the topic of Joe Biden, your illustrious, not so their president. Saying he's a white supremacist. <laughs> so if a president says somebody, a kid, is a white supremacist, what else is he doing that could jeopardize the country? Man, you guys sure had a bad running with presidents. Jeez. They got the big, the Donald who's the business type tycoon. And then you wound up with this nut. Go Brandon Go. Is, is that what it is? <laughs> I don't know. Who cares? They're all like bitching about each other. Don't we? Like ravens having a fight. <laughs> Like Krabby the Raven is really appearing in most of my videos, by the way. Gives heck to the other ravens. It's just, if you look at the videos, you can see Krabby the Raven, a she or he, reminds me of a she, Grandma, that's a good name for Krabby the Raven, Grandma, standing there with cur got a curved beak, chubby looking little thing with fluffed up quite a bit. I always antagonizing the other ravens. It's hilarious. I got a great videos of Krabby's around. Every day, Krabby's around. Mm. It's funny. I 
guess you have to look at my rating videos. What? <laughs> I post them to the Willis fan page. I apparently got quite a review. Ooh. The flashing light. Here we go again. Off the rails and off topic, but anyway. Oh, yeah, my raven spotting scope. <clears throat> right, where the oh, it's over here, I see. I see you. <laughs> yeah, I see myself, actually. Hey, look. It's so blurry that I can't back up anywhere, I don't think, can I? Ooh. No, not really. Now that I'm wrecking everything. <laughs> I see you. Hi, baby, I see you somewhere. Get my badge. Oh, but I, I gotta get my badge. I gotta get my little badge. Yeah, big one. Yeah, the big one. Yeah, the big one. I found my badge. Sorry for the. Sorry for the wait. Where's the camera thing? Oh, over there. Okay, that's a uh, Romulan Empire. So. This would do. Like, <laughs> Somebody made a thumping sound or was Raven on the roof again? Oh, let's see. Get my Romulan Klingon dress on and I'll be really wicked looking. Got these, the newest Mr. British Company of Canada. Years ago from the Star Trek shop and they carried everything in there. It was incredible what they, the stuff they had. I had quite a collection. I had the Klingon, Starfleet uniforms. I don't know where that stuff is. It could be in a gun crate. God, I wore a whole outfit to Japan. It's on the, it's on the internet, doctor. Yeah, Klingon, the Romulan Empire. Hmm. Being a Trekkie. Hmm. Anyway, I just wanted to show that off. I did before, anyway, didn't I? Of course you did, Major. Oh. So, um, let's see how long I've been chit-chatting. I was 
placing, I mentioned that before, the bands on the wheels and then I thought of the machining center and look at the wheels on that and expand the table a little more than what else I was doing. Um, cleaning up the, some of the Seneca Falls lathe number 10 hand wheels. A nice little lathe. And then I, did, I took a nice long bath. I had a bath. Yes, I did, doctor. <laughs> nice and smooth. I'm nice and smooth, Barbara. Oh, hi. I know. I'm going on a date. Oh, I get marriage proposals. As I am. It's kind of interesting. That's a long story, but I guess I'm so adorable and just can't resist me. <laughs> <coughs> I'm gonna get that lip in more. I think I put too much marine tech for my teeth repair there, so I clean that up with a file. I do my own teeth, by the way. I use I use a Mark 14 air supply unit for the gun sight for the Orlicon as my air. It's 110 volts. 1940s works great as an air compressor. I'm not kidding. I use like this. Dry out your mouth and you drill out any anything there and then put in Marine Tech and shape it. Works great. Okay, you think I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I tell you, I'm not kidding. No, no, no. Where's my air supply unit? Uh, uh, getting my air supply unit. That's the air supply in it. Works perfect. Got a brass tag on it. Say a date. Constant 45. Oh, yeah. Hard to see it here a little bit. Gotta clean that tag up again. Department Bureau Ordnance. Load 100 PSI here. Nice, huh? I got about four or five of these things. And I got more of the actual. I'm gonna find a date on it. <laughs> Woo! Westinghouse Company, 150 volts. Serial number 68. Hmm. Oh, okay. 43, okay. Well, that's what I use. Uh, it weighs about 60 pounds, maybe. Oh, wow. Uh. So that unit goes with the gun sight. And I got lots of those in original boxes with the instruction manual. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just sitting sitting on the floor. I was going to use them when I put my or, museum Orlicon I got from California together again. And that takes one of these along with this carriage, tripod, the gun sight. I'm going to get that done too. And another project. Hmm. So, baggy eyes, potassium. Taking extra potassium. 
And I always had that problem ever since I was a little fellow. Because when I was about 13, oh, what? Damn, hold on. 20! I look like a dingbat kid. That's a picture of my sister and my brother. That's bloody weird. Anyway, we'll have to talk about that another time. <sighs> hmm. Spin busy machinery. Well, I guess I should clean this little thing up too. But it works nice. I like doing my own history you know so that's kind of fun inspired by actually a, a YouTube channel that's no longer around I guess because everybody's got to conform to this unique pathological environment of news media lies and manipulations political manipulations medical manipulations got to conform you can't wander off, you can't talk about anything, or you get banned, or fact-checked. Oh, heaven forbid if you carry your gun outside. You've got to make sure you keep working on the, pe the populations, and make them actually believe that guns are very evil. And get them all taken away. An interesting con it is interesting though the concept and ideas of programming and manipulation over the years how it forms people's brains into these sultry little scared rat people some of that was talked about by Carlson Tuck or it was Carlson Tucker. All the different things they're talking about. Rittenbacher, is it? And all this fabricated nonsense. It's amazing. I mean, what would you do if you saw your people burning houses down and beat, beating up everybody? And Wouldn't you be think about it? Wouldn't you get prepared with something? Because it's non-lethal weaponry. You can use that stuff. You don't use firearms. It's got a big microwave cooking machine. Active denial system. Uh, it's uh, interesting. We don't want to see that kind of stuff happen, but it seems to be happening. And the cops are being beaten upon by government politicians. That's, not, that's very wrong. Uh, the whole thing's wrong. Anyway, I'm going on another side road. Yeah. yeah you gotta trust the police and fire people. Only, jeez, they save lives. The psychopathic raving lunatics that are out there all over the place. <coughs> A lot of them. So, yeah, I'd probably have a either a firearm or something solid life going on and you know, people go berserk and do these things. What's stopping them from knocking you off and beating you over the head or something or killing you? It's best to defend yourself. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. Um Actually, I did help a police officer out um, in Vancouver one time. This lunatic was reaching for his revolver and did get his revolver out of his holster. Vancouver Police Department. I was waiting for the number five robs and it was dark at night. I was going to Barclay Street to visit Billy Ross. So, if he got started shooting at all. I didn't know it was loaded or not. If he started shooting, 
bullets ricocheting and killed a poor police officer. So I went over and grabbed the, being familiar with firearms, I just grabbed the thing and twisted it out of his hand and put it back in the police officer's holster until he handcuffed the guy. A pretty wild scene. And then I got the bus was coming, so I left to catch the bus. Another time was somebody being raped in Vancouver. Her lady screaming and ran down the street. It's dark again. Somebody was trying to rape her. I went there. He ran off. I escorted the lady home, and then there was an investigation too. And the detectives came and wanted to know information. I told them everything I knew. Uh, well, anyway, you got to do something. You just can't stand around here, thumb up your ass, and do nothing. Oh, anyway, I'm going on free associating. How long have I been chatting for? Oh, it's been how long now? Oh, 36. Oh, this is really? I thought it was a long video. No, oh, well, it's the only one I did today. It doesn't take that long to upload on YouTube. Some people put like them, some people probably don't like them at all. Just some lunatic in a dress talking about all kinds of stupid stuff. <laughs> oh, well, I used to do the Lou Gentile radio show and you could entertain the guests and ask questions, so it's hours long, actually. It was arranged to Ariel Serban, Ariel Louise Serban, the grandniece of Nikola Tesla, who was found burnt to death in her trailer in Burnsville, Minnesota. And she did have a crush on me, and she had all different characters in her emails to me. It was pretty weird stuff. She overtook Corinne's computer. She could hack into anything. Why she did that, I have no idea, but Ariel Louise Serban was covered on a TV show called Death Ray with Jesse Ventura and myself and Dr. Wood. It was brought up in the mysterious James W. Block. Anyway, it could be raving psychopaths. I don't know. But anyway, she arranged a little genteel radio show and I was on the phone with Nancy Leader talking about, oh, what is it? Some planet, Newt Nibiru. But you don't, you know, you just, the next guest, what was the next guest? I forget. That was, it was very, very long. Actually, the longest telephone conversation I ever had was 2006. It was my buddy in Germany in Munich, Roland Brito. We did 24 hours, believe it or not. He phoned me, and we just kept on talking. I remember falling asleep on the floor. Huh? Another person always told me on a Sunday, Mark A. Solis, a scientist, engineer, who I met actually in person after those phone calls. He came up and I probably mentioned this before, a truck, box truck designed like his living room with his cat. He crossed the border, okay, no problem. He stayed us for a while. I think Lama Lee, my friend in Canada, we write emails almost every other night. Um, I thought he was kind of funny. I remember talking to Mark laying on the floor in the apartment, and the squirrels love my balcony, by the way. They made a huge nest there under a old box thing that was holding an antenna. And it took so all my papers and chewed them up and made a big nest. So the squirrels, I was laying on the floor talking to Mark. That's what I like doing. And these squirrels come in, and they always would come in and walk right over me. And Mark said, I've never seen anything like that before. I said, oh, well, these squirrels are always around here. 
that's including a mother squirrel that had babies behind a radio receiver of mine and chewed up all the wiring. And I moved the radio and looked, and she was kind of upset and took her babies outside. Three of them she had. God, I wish I had a camera back then. I think I... Did I have a camera? Yeah, I did. I'll put Mr. George Hathaway. Hello. Ah. But it was, uh, I had it mounted on the wall for the target area only. That thing captured a lot of weird footage. <laughs> If you see, I uploaded a black and white called The Unknown Demonstration. I was doing a demonstration for some people for days, if not weeks. I was doing two weeks for Dr. Thurston Ludwig. High definition footage he took. Also, Harold Burnett. Burnt. Harold, sorry, Harold Burnett. Burnt. And many others. But these folks, I, I think they were probably government. They filmed it all. And I got the camera and the video showing me filming them. Showing me inside the target area, rearranging everything after something lifted off. They wanted to put back and see if I could do it again, and I did it again, and it went on and on to other things. That's like several weeks long. This is the weirdest stuff. I've totally forgot about it when I was playing with those videos out there and putting it in the black and white on the TV. Uh, I've loaded some of it. It goes on for hours. But that's what I, I wanted to do. That's what Hathaway recommended. So the camera was always on when a film crew would come or news people or scientists. <sighs> anyway, what is that? It doesn't matter now anyway, all that stuff. Old history. Talk about new history, shouldn't I? Hmm? So I'll be doing magnetic experiments, high voltage experiments, not experiments, but projects here. And it'll be recorded. So I, I don't know what, it's, what good it's gonna be for, but vintage electrical machinery, I've got some coming in. Fun to do it, I always like high voltage. And if anything happens, it happens. If not, it doesn't. But I'm not going to go all out again like I used to do. At least I don't think so. That was the right moment. I mean, Vancouver was incredible for all the vintage equipment one needed. High voltage transformer, x-ray transformers, capacitors, electrostatic generators, everything. Nobody wanted this stuff. They just take it, take it. And I did. KS Mod Electrical Machinery. Ken Mod gave me pickup trucks full of stuff. Flush as well as um, the electronic shop. Peter Sakura, Satellite Electronics on Main Street. And RP Electronics on 4th Avenue. I wonder if they're still there. Rendell Perry, he was an interesting friend of mine. I saw him in New West a few times, too. Then the Navy ships. Wow. Anything I wanted off the warships, I could take it. Because I was doing my work. I didn't want money, because money complicates stuff, and I was already funded by Japan and later Germany to build these power cells, so. Anyway. I hate to look at what time this is going to be now. Mm, we got 42. No, four, wow. Well, mind you, I had to do lectures in Japan. Some of them were a couple hours long. But there was breaks in between. We built five, ten minutes. And it goes on again. And I was in Japan in 94, 95. And then next maybe a rest over for a day and off to the next city Tokyo and Hiroshima City and Osaka that was high flying times Jeez, small planes to get you there knock 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 on the hotel door time to go go now okay 
taxis and then bullet trains or aircraft to the next thing and everything is set up. It's incredible. It's one time. Yeah, it'd be fun to uh, somebody commented, yes, it'd be fun to do another TV show where it's a coverage. Yeah, I'll do it. Or Fox TV, or I'll do it again, no problem. I think it's a riot. It's fun doing stuff. I'm such a over glorified scrap collector and such a show off and such a narcissistic son of a bee. I think tell. I'm so vain. I often think the mirror is talking about me. <laughs> Oh, I am vain. I, I'm a, I don't know. I just, whatever. It doesn't matter to me what it is. It's all good fun. People make a problem out of things and they get all self-worked inside and all frustrated and all that kind of stuff. They always say laughter is the best medicine, and I think they're right. If I want a good laugh or a good cry, just look in the mirror. Holy stumping, snapping arseholes, what happened to you? Or, oh, aren't you looking sexy today? Or, my telomere should be more extended. Or, <laughs> lots of different things. Oh. You are such a cutie when you dress like that. Or you're, gee, help. <laughs> John, real. Oh, well, life's short. The old saying, there's a lot of short old saying, I think, therefore I am. I think that's very true. You are what you eat. And a bunch of others. If you think strongly, you can actually control your heart rate. I've, I've been there. I'm so self-aware of my entire system that one little flicker of palpitation triggers an anxiety sometime and it then creates a, a, a bit of adrenaline rushing in. So I'm trying to relax that down. Oh, gee. So that's why the Xanax... What's it take? I'll just take a Xanax or an aspirin. Because all this is too bright for me. This, And I can't really... I try with my machinery and vintage stuff to uh, be absorbed in. If I start thinking about stuff, especially in the sun, Snap back at it's real it's hard to describe it. But this is video's gone on quite a long time, so I should go. Okay. Thank you for listening to a silly lunatic.